I don't even want to think about that. Right. I think it was written from someone's experience. It was so on point that it had to be written from experience. That's almost sadder than (laughs) the episode. Now seems like a great time to go to our interview with Terry Hanauer, as promised earlier. A native of Toronto, Terry Hanauer graduated with a degree in theater arts from New York University and has worked in the United States and Canada as an actress. Her film credits include Havoc, The Rapture, and Communion. Terry's television roles are also extensive in shows ranging from Seinfeld to Without a Trace, NYPD Blue, and Showtime's cult hit Beggars and Choosers, where she recurred for two seasons as Dr. Lillian Wackenhut, the lesbian sperm-appropriating endocrinologist. She has continued to perform in theater, appearing at the Mark Taper Forum and the Arena Stage. Terry is also a photographer specializing in natural light photography. She has shot some of Hollywood's most prominent actors and actresses, and her work has appeared in advertisements, magazines, and on websites. But us Quantum Leap fans know her best as Irene Bosch from the episode Thou Shalt Not. Thank you for joining us today, Ms. Hanauer. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's my pleasure. I was very excited when I, I heard from you, and I loved my experience on Quantum Leap, and so I'm, I'm delighted to talk about it. Um, just to get started, can you tell me a little bit about your experience filming Quantum Leap? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what was really interesting was the part was very emotional and challenging, right? Because it's about a woman who feels that she is uh, really drifting away from her husband. And he, the husband, is deeply, deeply sad because their son was killed in an airplane crash. And he blames me because I'm the one who said, yes, let him go to Europe. And there was a, a crash. So he has never forgiven me. And that happened, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago, I think, in terms of the story. And what happens is that we're planning a bat mitzvah for our daughter and the rabbi, played by Scott Bakula, very lovely and handsome and all that. We kind of start to have the beginnings of a possible affair. And that, you know, in terms of an actress auditioning for that kind of part, it's just so full of every possible emotion, you know, in terms of how you feel about your husband, how you feel about the new man, that you shouldn't do it, the grief that you still have for your son. I mean, it was just a wonderful, wonderful role to audition for. Was it difficult bringing that much emotion into a character like that? Where do you get that from? That's a really, really good question. Um, I remember when I went into the audition that I really had to be real. And I'm talking, I think, in the audition piece was uh, something about the son. And I was a, a new mother at the time. Well, not really a new mother. Maybe my son was, I don't even know, three or four or something. And uh, I, I brought a picture of him into the room. And I thought, you know, should I do it? You know, is this weird and all that? And I thought, no, just the reality of God forbid, right, if this were to ever happen in one's life. So I put the picture, a small, small little picture, and I kind of snuck it on the desk, you know, facing me. And um, when I started the scene, all I had to do really was look at a picture of my son, and that unleashed the emotion. Um, you know, as an actor, what's important is you is to figure out who you are, how you work, and then give yourself the freedom to do what you need to do in order to get to the emotional, you know, heights or depths that you need to get to. So that for me really worked is bringing that picture in, and it was very moving for me. And the uh, in the audition, you know, they were all quite moved. And I got a call back and um, did the same thing for me. And I got the part. And then, I mean, I got the part literally like it was Friday at four. And they said, great, Terry, we're going to wardrobe right now. And they walked me right over to wardrobe. And I was beside myself with joy that I was going to play this part on a wonderful show. What was it like for you working with Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell? Well, I'll tell you something. Um <laughs> Scott Bakula is is one of the nicest guys, and I have to tell you, he's an amazing kisser, okay? Because, if, you know, in the scenes, right, we have an almost moment where we kiss. And so when we, we're rehearsing it, you know, you kind of you got to go for that moment, right? So we had a couple of actual kisses, and I remember thinking, wow, he's a really great kisser, which, of course, made, you know, working with him that much better. And uh, just as a little side note, I had also done... Several years later, I played Kevin Spacey's girlfriend in a movie of the week, 
and my whole thing was, you know, cut out because for a million reasons, they focused on Fred Savage and not on our storyline. But I also got to kiss Kevin Spacey. So um, I'm kind of uh, comparing their kisses and uh, they're both really good. But I'll go with Scott for the moment because we're talking about Quantum Leap. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a very good chemistry between you two in that scene. So that's that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. He was, you know, really great to work with. He's he's very professional. He's very talented. He listens. He's very involved. You know, he was really, he had his eye on everything. I mean, you know, when it's your series, you really, you really have to be that kind of person to make sure that it's all happening around you in the, in the way that makes everybody comfortable. And Dean Stockwell, he was just funny and really great to be around. And we had, um, one of the scenes was at the beach in Malibu and uh, it was a late night scene and we were all there and everybody, you know, that's when you really can tell the personality of who you're working with. And we were all just kind of punch drunk. <laughs> we weren't drunk, but we were punchy because we went into overtime. I mean, you know, golden time. And um, we were just having a blast because, you know, when it comes down to it, they're all actors. We're all actors and we all do it for the same reason, which is that we love we love acting so much. And so when you get past people's celebrity and all that, basically we're just actors. So um, it was a great set for me. Really great. Um, this episode dealt with uh, an issue, of course, of loss. And uh, it's as me, as a parent, it's difficult for me to watch this episode. Like you said, you'd, you wouldn't want that to happen in your own life. Have you, from any of your fans, had any communications about this episode that it's maybe helped them or touched them in a way? You know, uh, I have that quite a bit. Actually, people come up to me because I've done things that are, you know, like I, I play very human, human kind of characters. And what that means is that, you know, I'm like, people come up to me all the time and they go, oh, you're so familiar to me. Do I know you? Do I know you? And I go, well, you probably have seen me on television. They go, oh, right. Yes. And you remind me of my cousin. You remind me of, you know, my sister. It's like I remind people of people that they know, and um, so I'm able to bring out that human thing, and people have said to me, thank you for doing that, or thank you for going back to your husband in that, or thank you for expressing that kind of emotion, because a lot of people don't have places to express that, and I think one of the jobs that actors do for people is that we get to express those things that regular people don't, because they don't know how or they're afraid to, you know? So by me having had those experiences on that show, people were, I think, able to kind of move past some of their own issues. It's a very interesting question, Albie. That was, that's really, I never quite thought of it in that way, but I think that that is one of the purposes of um, actors. Yeah, they, they really do help people, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people go through things and, and they're afraid to talk about them or if they're not in therapy, they, they don't have a place. Or even if they have friends, they're maybe ashamed of what they're thinking or feeling. And uh, I think watching an actor go through it, I think, is therapeutic for them. Just a few silly uh, technical questions uh, that we're curious about. Sure. The house that the characters lived in, was that on a soundstage? Um, yeah. It was the sound stage. Wow, you're really making me think. Mm -hmm. The uh, the temple was an actual temple, you know. So that was the location. Um, the house was a sound stage. Yeah, they built that, or they built the rooms. You know, I mean, it's never usually like a whole house. It's kind of like the room that you walk in, the bedroom of the son that that he was sleeping in. Um, yes, that was definitely on the sound stage. If they do that, you know, it's just easier. Because it was, oh, uh, what was the company? I can't even remember what lot we were on. But um, they have all these huge sound stages, and it's just better to shoot because you really have quiet. You have all the lights you need. You don't have street traffic usually. And usually TV shows do that because um, they'll build sets or they'll build sets that can become other sets, and it amortizes over the period of the series. So though it seems like it's a lot of money over two or three or four or five-year series, it, it amortizes rather than going to different locations all the time, which is very expensive. You have trucks, you have trailers, uh, you have sound issues, you have lighting issues. So yeah, that particular, most of that was, was done on the sound stage. How long did the whole process last for you from auditioning? I know you got right into wardrobe and there was some ADR in the episode. And how much later on was that from the filming? Um, the actual, that was an hour show. And usually our shows take between seven and eight days to shoot. Dep 
depends on the, you know, budget of the show. I also did um, Six Feet Under. I was a guest star in that one episode. And they take nine days to shoot, nine or ten. Their model was more like an independent film. They did lots and lots of takes. But Quantum Leap was not that. And I was a guest on it, and so I was pretty much throughout the show. So they basically have you for that week. It's usually like a seven- or eight-day period. And like I said, uh, the last Friday of the shoot, we were out on the beach, and that ended up going into way into overtime, <laughs> golden time. So I didn't that day get home till I think the sun was rising Saturday morning, but I was delighted because, you know, that was the end of the show. We had had such a great experience, and you make extra money, of course, when you go into overtime. Um, and then the ADR, the audio dialogue replacement, that normally happens about a week before the show is going to air because it takes, you know, once you shoot it, then it goes into editing and then, you know, all the sound stuff comes in. And depending on the schedule of the show, normally the show takes anywhere from, you know, three to eight weeks later is it aired. It depends on, you know, their schedule. So normally you go in for half a day or a day of ADR and you fill in all the sound that that they missed or it was difficult to get. And I remember we had stuff on the beach. It's so hard to do sound on the beach because you have, you know, you have the water and you have all that. So I think that was mostly what the ADR was for that. <laughs> and now that I'm directing, I can tell you so many things about all different sides of, of that world. You know, I, I can see everything that's involved and it's a lot, a lot involved. Being a director yourself now, do you have any memory of the director in that episode? Randy Roberts was the director of that episode, and I, I'm trying to remember, I think that he, that, that may have been one of his first directing jobs, that he worked on the show as a camp, as a DP or as a editor. I'm just trying to remember. I think it was one of the first things that he directed, and um, we got along really well, and he was very helpful to me because he was able to, to see if I was kind of off the mark, he would come up to me and talk to me privately. And I remember one direction he said is that, you know, your character is a woman. She's a woman. She's not a girl. She's a woman. And that was very, very good because a lot of actresses, you know, you know, we, I had or we have the feeling that we're eternally ingenues, <laughs> no matter how old we are. Um, and this is true, believe me. Um, so when he said that, it really gave me a different point of view on the character. And of course, she was a woman. She was a woman who married and had children. And um, it helped me give dimension to this character, even though she was acting like a girl in the presence of Scott Bakula, because, you know, her her emotions were being stimulated in a way they, they haven't been stimulated in a long time. But in fact, his direction for me was very, very astute. And I appreciated that. Okay, now time for some silly questions. Okay. What was it like giving Jerry Seinfeld a massage? <laughs> that was really funny because, obviously, I mean, he was in the audition room, and I didn't do the, dis the massage in the audition, right? I got the part, and then you're on the set, and in terms of a, a sitcom, I don't know if you know how it works, but basically you read through the uh, scripts several days, and the writers go back and rewrite, and then you basically have, like, a blocking rehearsal, and then you're on, and you do the show twice in front of a live audience. So what I'm getting at is that, you know, the first time I touched Jerry Seinfeld is in front of a live audience, right? Um, he was very gracious and fun, and we laughed about it. And um, I can tell you something really interesting. My lines in that, one of my lines was, run, Billy, run. Mm -hmm. It's like it's become a classic of the Seinfeld shows, right? So I'm a woman who's afraid of um, Jerry Seinfeld at that moment, and I have my son Billy with me, and I tell him to run. So I said to Jerry, I said, you know, I'm a mother. I would first try to get my son's attention, and I would say, Billy, run, run. And he said, yeah, but Billy, run, run isn't funny. Run, Billy, run is funny. And I said, okay, you're the guy. And every time I watch that show when it comes on, you know, and reruns, the audience just breaks up into laughter. So, you know, he, he was so right about that. He, you know, when somebody knows what is funny, you got to go with them. And he definitely knows what's funny. What was it like playing a ghost on Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction? <laughs> You're bringing back my whole life, Albie. I love it. A ghost. You know what? It was really fun because a ghost gives you total freedom. And you can look any way. You can act any way. You can talk any way. It's like, who knows really what a ghost looks like or speaks like, right? I mean, it's all our imagination anyway. So I got to really, you know, 
have, I actually, I'm trying to remember the storyline. It was revenge, right? He killed me or something. Right. And um, <laughs> so it was revenge. It was great. Um, you know, acting is so much fun. You get to play all these things. You get to commit to things and go for it 100%. Um, so playing a ghost was uh, fun. A lot of people like that show, by the way. So I got a lot of uh, response from that. I was surprised. I didn't know that people watched it, but they, they did and liked it. I remember being like scared a little bit of your character in that the first time I saw it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so job well done. Oh, well, good. Well, thank you. Your career, you've been in so many different television shows and a bunch of movies. What sticks out for you as a career highlight? Um, you know, it's ironic, I guess. It's, I did a movie that Steven Spielberg directed called Minority Report with Tom Cruise, but that section was cut. I play a, um, a woman who is opposed to what he's doing, what Tom Cruise is doing in that. And it was they wrote the scene once they started shooting. They shot it for a day, and then afterwards they decided they didn't need it, which is unfortunate for me. But what was really great for me was the working experience with Steven Spielberg and with Tom Cruise. And I was so nervous. I mean, as you can imagine, right? I was just, oh, my God, you know, so nervous. Um, but as soon as I got on the set, uh, they, you know, I had to wait, of course, four hours in the trailer. But as soon as they brought me on the set, you know, they introduced me to Steven Spielberg. And he had, he had chosen me from a, a tape. And he was very sweet, very nice. And, uh, and then Tom Cruise came over to me. And he said, hi, welcome to the set. I'm Tom. And I said, I know who you are. <laughs> Thank you. And he said, is there anything I can get for you? I said, what, what do you mean? And he goes, you drink some water. You want some coffee? You want anything? And I said, no. Well, thank you. I'm great. He goes, okay. And he says, hey, do you have a minute to run lines? And I said, oh, I would love to run lines. And the fact that he came up to me and was so gracious and so lovely, and we worked together. It was beautiful. It was a great, it was a one-day job. And then about two weeks later, I did a, um, a job on Good Medicine, and I was in the trailer, and I met the guy who was playing my brother. I won't say his name. And uh, I said to him, oh, great. I'm so happy to meet you. And I said, um, would you like to run some lines? And he looked at me, and he said, why? You've got most of them. And I thought, wow, Tom Cruise came up to me and asked me to run lines with him. And this guy isn't even gracious enough to say yes when I'm asking to run lines with him. So what I learned from that, in terms of when you, your question highlight, is, you know, just the respect that one should just like naturally give to somebody else is, I think, a human gift, you know, to say to somebody, welcome, hi, can I help you? It just that does so much for everybody as compared to not doing that. So that was a highlight for me. And now as a director, I'm very conscious of working with people that have that same kind of positive and embracing and welcoming um, mentality. I don't work with anybody, if I can, that um, isn't like that. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're going to spend your creative hours with somebody, you want them to be somebody that you really enjoy working with. What was the rehearsal process like, if any, on Quantum Leap for you? There was no rehearsal time, actually. Um, I believe there was the read-through of the script, the table read of the script. And then, basically, you get your, you know, your schedule and you show up. And uh, normally, there's a blocking, you know, where the actors come in and the director's there and then they block you, which literally is for camera. It's not usually for emotion or for character. It's mostly for, well, the camera's here, so you need to move here, stand here, turn here. And uh, and then, you know, you kind of do it. Then you then you go back to hair and makeup, and, you know, they tweak your costume, and then you come back in, and then you kind of start. And usually the first couple takes are kind of, you know, kind of rehearsal, but really they're not. I mean, in, in television, especially network television, it's such a heavy schedule that if you can do it in one or two takes or three takes, then, they, you know, they're happy and then they move on because they have so much to do in a short amount of time. So there's not a lot of rehearsal, which is why casting is so important. You know, you cast the right person, then that person is, you know, almost the character rather than casting the wrong person. And then you really have to rehearse. Speaking of you being a director, uh, very exciting news. You have a movie out. 
I do, yes, thank you. It was uh, recently released uh, theatrically in Los Angeles, and now it's available on video on demand. It's available on Amazon and Vid and will soon be available on Hulu, Hulu Plus, and it's available on iTunes. It's called Sweet Talk, and I'm so happy and so proud of this film. It uh, is a very unconventional love story. It stars Natalie Z, who you may know. She was on The Following and uh, Californication and Justified, wonderful actress. And Jeffrey Vincent Paris, who's done a lot of television and is now on General Hospital, terrific actor. And um, it's um, sexy and it's romantic and it's um, very, you know, different and unique. And it's about a phone sex operator and this guy who calls in and um, they kind of go on journeys that are um, romantic and uh, fantastical. And uh, they learn a lot about themselves and um, the audience that's seen it has really, really loved it. So I'm very, very happy and proud of it. Thank you for asking. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Me personally, I love the work you did in Quantum Leap and it meant a lot. Thank you. And I really appreciate what you said about my work and, and that uh, it touched you, Albie. Uh, that makes um, that makes a lot of uh, difference to me. So thank you very much. And thanks for doing this. I think it's great. That was a great interview. Um, she seemed to remember a lot about recording and she recalled a lot of details about the episode and she said she hadn't seen it in a while. That's awesome that she remembered so much. I remember yesterday. <laughs> 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 she seems really smart and well-spoken though. That was really an awesome interview. That movie she was talking about, Sweet Talk, we watched it last night on Amazon Video On Demand on our Roku and it looked really good. It was a good movie, I think. It was something I've never seen before. It was very different. And that never happens. Right. It was an original idea. I think it was adapted from a play. And I mentioned that while we were watching it. This would make a good play. Yeah. And then at the end, we saw that. But it was a really interesting idea. And it wasn't what I thought it was going to be in a good way. About 20 minutes in, I was saying to myself, I think I like this movie. I'm going to like this movie. Where is it going? I have no idea. You just saw a woman in underwear and you were like, I love this movie. That helped. <laughs> that helped. It was a very sensual movie, but it wasn't distasteful at all. And erotic in the brain way, not the physical way. Yeah, it, it was a really, really cool movie and a cool concept. I really had no idea where it was going to end up. And it, I was really pleased with the ending. It's worth checking out. And you can find out more about that on quantumleappodcast.com slash sweet talk. And thank you, Terry, for that awesome interview and for directing that movie. It was good. Very good job. <laughs>